In this video, I wanna go over three graphs of quadratics that you absolutely need to know. Now I'm not talking graphing step by step. I'm saying just to be able to identify what the shape of the graph looks like. Because once we start getting into different types of functions or even into calculus, a lot of these graphs show up. And my expectation as a teacher is that the students know how these graphs look or know how to go ahead and do a quick sketch of them. And unfortunately for a lot of students, they get caught and they're like, oh crap, I totally forgot how to graph this or what this graph would look like. So let's do a quick little review of the major quadratic graphs you need to know how to sketch on your own. Okay, so in this case, the first one would be this binomial x squared plus four x. And I think the most important thing in this problem is just really identifying, we can quickly identify what the x-intercepts are. If I go ahead and replace my y with zero, and then I'm gonna have an x squared plus a four x. Now I can go ahead and factor out a x, so zero equals a x times x plus four, and therefore using the zero product property, x is equal to zero, and x plus four is equal to zero, so x equals a negative four. So again, when we're solving for x when y is equal to zero, these are gonna represent our x-intercepts. The only other thing we need to understand or look at is what our coefficient of our x squared is. If that's positive, we know our graph opens up. If it's negative, we know our graph opens down. And again, I'm just focused on having a general understanding of what this graph looks like. There's different techniques and different ways to be able to identify the vertex. And if that's what your problem needs, then fine. You can go ahead and identify those parts. But a lot of times we just need to understand a quick sketch of where these intercepts are and what this graph looks like. So I have a intercept at negative four, I have an intercept at zero, and I know the graph is going to open up. So it's gonna look something like this. Again, I'm just trying to achieve a quick little sketch. All right, the next one, is going to be one that it, it just commonly students make mistakes on it. So in this case, I have y equals three minus an x squared. So I think it's important to understand your vertex form for in this case, and also understand that we typically don't wanna graph it in this, in this way. What we're gonna to wanna to do is rewrite the x squared first. So again, make sure you keep the negative with the x squared. So it's a negative x squared, and that's a positive three. So we can rewrite that as a plus three. Now, if you remember vertex form, vertex form looks like this, a times x minus h quantity squared, plus k. Recognize my h here is zero, right? I'm not subtracting or adding anything to my x. So therefore, from vertex form, that means I'm not shifting anything left or right, right? So my graph is going to have a vertex I know on the y-axis. However, k is going to be our shifting our graph up and down three. So we're gonna go up three units. But now you can see my a is gonna be negative. And like I mentioned over here, I know the graph is gonna open down. So the graph is going to look something like that. Okay, I added in a little bonus at the end because I was like, eh, you know what? I explained vertex form so much in this example. Let's do one that's a little bit more difficult for you students. And I think with this one is going to be when we have a horizontal stretch or compression. So hopefully you recognize if you remember vertex form, we know this graph is gonna be shifted two units to the left and then down three units, right? And most students will kind of see that we know A is positive, so we know it's opened up. So we go down negative two or left negative two and then down three. Okay, I got my vertex. I know it's gonna open up to the left and up to the right. Students need to understand how we deal with when we have a horizontal stretch or compression. So to do that, let's go back and just review our parent graph of x squared. You can create a table to remind yourself on this, but these points here, if I plug in one, I'm gonna get a one. When I plug in two, I'm gonna get a four, right? Because two squared is going to be four, one, two, three, four. And then that works on the reflection part as well, okay? So that is going to be your parent graph, okay? And you could even do three and then you get nine, but that's kind of crazy. So what's really important though, if I go over one, up one, right? That's gonna be your first two points, but now I'm multiplying it by two. So if I want to kind of look at what is this two going to be doing, I'm gonna go over one, up one, but that's multiplied by two. So it's really gonna be going up two, over one, up two. And then instead of going over two, up four, we're multiplying that by two. So that's gonna be over two, up eight. So over two, up eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And you can see that this graph is going to be much skinnier than the previous graphs I did. And again, if we had like a one half, then you'd go over one, up one half, right? Because one times one half is going to be one half. So ladies and gentlemen, these three quadratics happen all the time. Students forget them. I don't want that to happen to you. I hope this video was helpful. Cheers.